I get a lot of questions from parents asking what they should pack for kids' lunches. I don't have kids, but if I did, I would definitely pack their lunches in bento boxes because they're super cute and it'll make them the coolest kids at school. Let's go make them. Oh, hey, look at all these gluten-free vegan ingredients. As far as superfoods go, quinoa is kind of nipping at the heels of kale right now. It's full of fiber, protein, iron, magnesium, all those things that you want to feed your kids to keep them fueled throughout the day. So to start off, we're gonna make some pizza bites, which is a really great thing to pack for kids' lunches because kids love pizza and also kids love to dip stuff because it's super fun. In order to make our pizza and our pizza sauce, we are first going to saute some onions and garlic on the skillet right here. So let's just heat this up a bit, add a little bit of oil, get our onions, which are just diced. We're gonna let these go for a couple minutes and then add the garlic in. They don't have to be completely caramelized. We just wanna soften them up and they're gonna add a great flavor to both the pizza sauce and the pizza bites. Then I add the garlic in. We'll just let it saute for a couple more minutes. It's already starting to smell really nice. Okay, these look good. I'm just gonna turn the heat off and put about half of what's in here into our bowl to make the pizza bites. The remainder we're gonna set aside to go with the pizza sauce later. Now we are going to add in our big old flax egg, which is just water and ground flax that you let sit for about 15 minutes. It's really good for gluten-free baking because it helps to bind and add some moisture. Let's get this in here. It's sort of like a magic little combination. Dried basil and dried oregano, kind of pizza herbs. Some nutritional yeast to give it a little bit of a cheesy flavor. Also add in those B vitamins. Some baking soda, a little bit of salt, and some brown rice flour. But really you could use any gluten-free flour that you like. Let's just give this a quick mix. It is a pretty dry mix, so don't panic if it does not look like pancake batter. And also I'm going to add in some quinoa that I've already cooked and mix. Okay, this looks good. Now we just have to bake it. I'm gonna use these cute little muffin tins and give it a good spray with some olive oil after I pump it. You could really use a regular muffin tin, but I like to use the minis because they're kind of bite-sized. And then we're just gonna spoon a little bit of this mix into each of these little tin things. I usually use my fingers for this part. So we're really just packing it in to make it into a dense little pizza bite. We're making a lot of little bites. Okay, these are ready to go. Let's pop these in the oven at 350 for about 15 or 20 minutes. All right, well that's going. We are going to make a very quick pizza sauce. We're basically just going to be blending a bunch of stuff in our food processor. We'll start out with some sun-dried tomatoes, which I've been soaking in water for about 15 or 20 minutes. You just wanna get most of the water out and put it in there. Now I'm gonna add in some fresh tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil, maple syrup, some red pepper flakes, a bit of salt, some lemon juice. Okay, I'm just gonna blend this for a sec. And then we are going to add the rest of the onions and garlic from when we sauteed these earlier for the pizza bites. Just blend it a little bit more. I like to do it last because it keeps it a little bit chunky. Our pizza sauce is done. Let's go check on those pizza bites. Okay, let's let those cool down for a few minutes while we grab a few other things. 
I have these kale chips, which were actually another recipe on the show. We'll put a link to that. And we're also gonna make dates with almond butter in them. So all you're gonna do is take these dates and remove the pit, which I have already done, and replace the pit with almond butter. Okay, it's not the prettiest thing, but it's delicious. Let's make a few of these. So you're putting somewhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon of almond butter in here, depending on how big your date is. All right, and we have one more thing. We're gonna cut up some watermelon. So what I'm doing is just cutting rounds so that I can then cut this fruit into adorable tiny little shapes. Like, oh my God. Adorable. All right, let's do some other shapes. Maybe your kid doesn't like hearts. That's fair. Maybe your kid's different. That's good. I'm different. And here is a star to let your little one know that they are a star. How about a moon? Come on. Okay. So now all of our components are done. All we have to do is assemble our bento box. I have this cute stainless steel one, but they come in lots of colors that are cuter and brighter for kids. I am just going to ladle some delicious pizza sauce into this first little zone. It smells real good. Okay, let's check out these pizza bites. It's nice and dense. Perfect little snack size, and we'll put a few in here. This size is perfect for the bento because you can get lots of little ones. Oh, it's so cute. And add as many kale chips as we can possibly fit. This is a really nice way to pack greens for your kids because they can eat them with their hands and they're more fun to eat than a salad. That looks great. Now I'm gonna add my delicious date bites. And my adorable little fruit shapes. And we are good to go. There you have it. Your kid will be the coolest one at the lunch table. If not the coolest, then definitely the healthiest with the best digestion, and that is pretty cool by me.